back to a brand new episode of Virtual Coffee. My name is Alexa Collier, and on this podcast, I chat with small business owners. We dive into their stories, perspectives, pieces of advice for others, and it's just such a fun time showcasing small business owners who are following their passions. Now, with me today is Sarah Valeri, the founder and owner of Hello Clutter. This is Sarah's second guest appearance on Virtual Coffee. She first shared her story and the behind the scenes of her business on episode 42 of the podcast. So if you want a introduction to Sarah and Hello Clutter, definitely check out that episode first. Again, that's episode 42. But in today's episode, we dive into how her business has progressed and evolved during this past year. And we also discuss how your Enneagram type can help you declutter and organize better. I absolutely love this episode and I know you will too. Before we hear from Sarah, I'd really appreciate if you could rate and review Virtual Coffee on the podcast app on your Apple device. You can now rate the podcast on Spotify, I think too. So all the ratings would be greatly appreciated. You can also follow us on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, all the socials. It's all at Virtual Coffee Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. Happy New Year. Going to be a great 2022. I have a lot of ideas on how to evolve and update the podcast and do some new things. So look out for those. But for now, let's hear from Sarah and dive into this awesome, entertaining, valuable episode. Welcome back, Sarah, to the podcast. Thank you so much for being back on. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to chat with you again. Yeah, I know. Me too. I'm really looking forward to just catching up and hearing what's been going on uh, with your business directly from you because I, of course, follow along your Instagram and, and know some things. But to kick things off here, where have you been the past about year? I think you were last on Virtual Coffee February 9th. 2021. So this year, almost almost one year later, any major updates? Like what's top of mind? Where where should we start? Oh my gosh. So I went back and listened to us chat and it was like literally listening to like baby Sarah talk because Aww. it was so cute. I was saying how, you know, it was my dream in 2021. I'd be able to take my business full time. And I was thinking, you know, maybe December it will finally be the time to take the plunge. And I did it in Yay. March. So oh, wow. in March of 2021, I took Hello Clutter full time. And I don't think I really believed it when I said it on your podcast, like that was going to happen. And it did. And it's just so neat. But I guess that would be the biggest thing that has changed since we last chatted. Congratulations. That's huge. That is such a major accomplishment. And yeah, like you said, to happen so quickly after you stated that on the podcast is incredible. So congratulations. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's been, I, like I kind of said, I didn't expect it, but mm -hmm. really, really excited and and so blessed to be where I am today. Yeah, that's awesome. And what's that like taking it full time? You know, sometimes I have these random dreams of, oh, what would it be like if I, you know, took the podcast full time, which I have no intention of of moving on from my corporate job, but more so just thoughts around Maybe it would be easier to keep up with social media or I don't know. My thoughts immediately go to maybe it would be easier, but I'm sure that's also partially incorrect. So what are <laughs> the differences, right, of taking it part time to full time? I mean, it, it's stressful and mm -hmm. it's scary. I don't think there's a day that I didn't feel at least a little bit of fear. It's putting with, a, I guess, a strange way to put it, it's kind of like putting all of your eggs in one basket and saying, yeah. okay, here, this is what I'm supposed to do. And I definitely still have my struggles of, you know, the imposter syndrome and the self-doubt that kicks in. But I think at the end of the day, I know I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. So mm -hmm. I guess that part is easier. I'm not living in, like, my corporate job was great. And I loved teaching when I was a teacher. But it didn't ever feel easy in terms of like, you know, I had to try hard at those things to be good. And I still have to try hard to be a good organizer. But at the end of the day, I feel, I feel good because I know where I'm supposed, I'm, I'm, I'm at where I'm supposed to be. Mm -hmm. No, that makes sense. And I think I can relate to that as well. Just 
when you like your job, whether it's a business you run and own or it's a corporate nine to five job, if you like that job, everything just becomes easier. Even if the tasks, like you're saying, aren't actually easier, like you, of course, work very hard. It just maybe the mental mindset or or the attitude around it becomes more smooth, right? It becomes easier in that way. Yeah. And there's still things in being full time that I don't like doing. Sure. Like, yeah. <laughs> like social media is like one of those things that I do. I enjoy it, but then also it's like soul sucking. I mean, like I will end up just scrolling on other organizers and comparing myself to them. And, you know, it just turns into like a time suck. So whereas like there's things that I really like now that I'm doing full time and I'm, I also have to remember like, okay, I'm doing this for a business and I need to make sure I kind of stay in, in my lane, if mm -hmm. you will. You yeah. Know? Yeah. That makes sense. Staying focused on your task. Yeah. Cause to your point, right. That is a huge difference going from the typical America corporate world to running your own business because the corporate world, I don't know, you, you do get some of that comparison maybe with promotions or successes like that, but I think it's less so than even, you know, with the podcast, right. Comparing to other podcasters on social media, like it's so easily accessible that it's so easy to compare and get kind of sucked into that. Oh yeah. And you know, talk to people about decluttering their lives. And sometimes mm -hmm. it has to do with decluttering like social media and what we're yeah. comparing ourselves to. And I've had clients who get nervous and they're like, my house doesn't look like these people, like sometimes of like the photos you post. And I'm like, hey, like, stop, let's stop comparing ourselves to what other people have. Because right. especially when we do that in terms of our stuff or what face we put out on social media, it's just not, it's not always the real thing, mm -hmm. you know? And I'm like, yeah, okay, you can look at their after photos and they had a great transformation, but like, look at the before, right? right? Like we all had our thing that we were struggling with and comparing our struggles or our clutter to other people's, like it's not going to help us push past and mm -hmm. kind of have to think about that in social media terms too. Like right. we're all putting our best face out there. You know, it's yep. not always the before photo that we see. We see the after photo, the perfectly curated one. Exactly. It's always the highlight reel, right? Being put mm -hmm. out on social media. I think I said this when we spoke last time on your episode. I just love that you bring a deeper meaning to organization and cleaning. And over this past 10 months, have you learned anything more about organization and, and cleaning and decluttering that perhaps you didn't know back then or have learned along the way with working with new clients Anything come to mind? Um, I know that's kind of a an odd question, but I'm curious what's on your brain. No, I think that's a great question. And I think, yes, I think I've just learned to dive so much more into how important the decluttering part is and that that deeper meaning is way more important to me than any perfectly curated after photo mm, that I can yeah. create. Because I know, yes, that's pretty and that's going to bring you peace when you look at it, but the true transformation happens inside. And I think this past year, what I've really focused on is more of realizing our society has a consumerism problem. And a lot of my clients, they've said, you know, I've decluttered in the past or people who just message me or whatever it might be. They're like, I've decluttered in the past, but it doesn't work. And when that's what we're seeing, it's because there's a deeper issue. We're overspending. You know, you might get rid of a lot of stuff, but then you bought a bunch of stuff this past Christmas and now it's in your house again. Right. So it's realizing it's an ongoing process. You know, I don't just, I didn't just declutter my house once and now my house never gets cluttered. Like if I'm not careful, stuff will creep back in. I think I just realized that it's a, it's a much bigger problem and that's daunting at times, but I know the more people who I can reach and the more that I can talk about it and help people realize, oh, it's not just me who struggles with impulse buying or it's not just me that struggles with having all of this stuff in my house. Like helping kind of normalize that and not being so hush-hush about it. I hope that that will kind of have people open their eyes to what marketing companies and what these big businesses are trying to do, mm -hmm. which is just push their stuff onto us. That is an interesting insight. And again, I like how you it seems like you're helping your clients with more than just to get to that after photo, right? You're trying to get to the deeper root cause perhaps, or looking for the other influences of what led them to this clutter or being unorganized and then trying to help them solve that. You're not just 
let's organize the pantry. Okay, I'm done here. Bye. <laughs> you know, you kind of <laughs> get to the to the deeper meaning. And I think that's really the value you bring that that deeper conversations, bringing those new perspectives to your clients. Yeah. And, you know, that's where I can come in and make those pretty before and after photos. Mm -hmm. I can do that pantry. Right, I just right. don't think it would be serving people well. Mm -hmm. And if we don't get to that root cause, if we don't get to that deeper meaning, then it's not going to really make that true transformation. Like I want people to transform their spaces and I want them to feel that rest that comes with not being surrounded by things. I love it. And speaking of your clients, you know, for those who maybe didn't listen to your your previous episode and are jumping in now, do they have to be in the Raleigh area? Can you do virtual consultations? Tell us a little bit about your process. Yes. So all of my services, whether you are local to the Raleigh area or you live across the country, everything starts with a free virtual like Zoom call. So it's a chance for us to get to know each other a little bit better just to understand what your goals are and then make sure that we're a good fit. You know, there are other organizers out there. There's other people who declutter and who help. So I just want to make sure that it's, it is the right fit. And just mm -hmm. because you found me first doesn't mean I might be the best one for you, or maybe it does. But that call is just for a chance for us to get to know each other a little bit better and a very low, like a low barrier <laughs> to having mm -hmm. someone into your home and showing them whatever, or showing me, I guess, whatever mess you might have. Yep. So whatever space it is that you're struggling with, or if, you know, you're just looking, you know, you have a space that you want to organize or want to set up well, but you don't know how. Um, so we talk about that on, on that goal setting call. And then from there, um, I do offer in-person organizing and I do virtual as well. So um, the virtual can be kind of like coaching, helping you through the decluttering process and what you are looking to find on the other end of decluttering once it's over. Or like I mentioned, it might be more like the organizing where you've done the decluttering and now you want to make sure that you're buying and investing in the right type of bins that are going to be sustainable for you, that are going to actually make a difference and make your space very functional. And then obviously I do that for my in-person clients as well. I'm just there more to aid the process, keep everything moving, and then set everything up beautifully for them at the end as well. Awesome. I'm so happy you're still doing the virtual uh, just because I think one, it's such a great idea to get your services beyond just the Raleigh area. And two, I think it's so doable, you know, just hopping on a call. And like you said, it's kind of more of a consultation then um, and getting your services that way. I'm just I'm really happy you still do the virtual. I think yeah. that was a great idea. They're so fun. And I, I feel like it's kind of it's not therapy. I am not a licensed therapist. Mm -hmm. I will be the first one to tell you that. But you know, sometimes that's kind of what it turns into. It's us digging yeah. into that deeper meaning of why are we struggling so much to let these things go? And it's cool to do that virtually with people who I wouldn't be able to meet in person otherwise. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's really cool that, you know, it's kind of a thing that started out of the pandemic of feeling like, okay, maybe this is something that I would enjoy doing and helping people this way and something that has kept moving. Yeah, I'm glad it's still around too. Yeah, I totally agree. And kind of the other update that's been on my mind, I think when we talked last, you were about to launch like a course or, you know, something people could sign up to and jump on a call or get materials that you're sharing about decluttering. How did that go? Are you still doing those extra materials like beyond your typical services? Um, how did that go? Yes. So I did. I had first launched it right before the podcast mm -hmm. came out. Um, so I did two rounds of it. I called it Fall in Love with Decluttering. And the first one, it went well. And I just accepted feedback from everyone who took it. But I kind of made it more of a crash course. It was yep. six days back to back with like live calls that they could catch on. I did it like on Facebook. So Facebook Live, they could rewatch the videos later. Oh, nice. And I realized I threw a lot of information at people all at once. <laughs> and if you're already feeling <laughs> cluttered and disorganized, oh, yeah. probably six <laughs> days in a row was not the best way. But, um, you know, I accepted that feedback. I still got good that, you know, people enjoyed the content. Yeah. They just needed it maybe to have a little bit more time to digest. So then I did it again in the fall for fall in love with decluttering. I thought I was so freaking clever with that, um, but <laughs> I did it then and I made it a six week program. So oh, one nice. call a week 
and just like giving people time to go through their spaces in the meantime, figuring out what they were struggling with. Um, And it was a lot more intimate that way as well. So I really enjoyed that and something I definitely want to continue doing. Uh, It's kind of fallen a little bit more to the wayside as I focus on more in-person and one-on-one coaching, but I I definitely want to maybe try to figure out a way to streamline that and whether that's Mm -hmm. like a a course that's pre-recorded and someone can go through and do on their own pace or something, Uh, kind of things that I'm all bouncing around in my head, but need to take the plunge and get that done too. There's another Mm -hmm. thing of going full time. You're like, I have all the ideas and all the things I want to do. And I I sometimes just need to focus on one before I jump into too much and get myself super overwhelmed. Awesome. Well, I love the experimentation with that course going from six days to six weeks. Uh, That is uh, a true, true case of improvement there. I write and basing it off of feedback. I love that. Um, And how cool. Yeah. I just, I think your Instagram too is, is so neat because you post those you know, before and after pictures and the actual decluttering, but you also have tips on there and tricks. Like you don't just have to be one of your clients to appreciate your Instagram. Um, You can get value from just following you just based on your tips and tricks and stories. I really like how you're doing that. And also, I just realized that your Instagram is so aesthetically pleasing too with the blue. That's like one thing I just, I have yet to accomplish with mine, especially with my drawings, because I just go with whatever colors I want to do. And anyways, this is a plug for your Instagram. Everyone should go check out Sarah and Hello Clutter's Instagram, please. It's it's very nice. You'll definitely get value from it. Awesome. You're so kind. <laughs> yeah, that's um probably one of those things that I... I it's silly, but I do it. It's like one of the things I like doing. It's like fun to pull those colors together and like Mm -hmm. keep things on brand. But then I also want to add value. I think the before and after photos can be a little bit encouraging of like, wow, look at what we can do with a space. But then I also, I want it to be that education based. I want someone to go to my page and feel empowered that they can do this. And here's some, some things to help you through. Mm -hmm. And if you're feeling super overwhelmed and not something that you would enjoy, if you're like, yeah, decluttering, no, thank you. I'd rather hire someone like know that there's no shame in that. And so yeah. thank you so much for saying that. Cause it's nice to feel recognized that that, or I guess that that is being recognized. Cause I, yeah, I don't want it just to be a thing of, Oh, they click on my page and they feel bad about themselves because their homes don't look right. like that. Like I yeah. want it to be, I just want people to know where my heart is too. And that I really truly care about them and I want them to have whatever resources they need to be able to accomplish their goals. Yeah, I think the pictures you post are so encouraging and it's even, you know, in your captions and the way you post it, it's never, oh, look at, look at this client. You'll never be able to look like this. It's, it's inspiring. It's, it's encouraging to want to be organized. And I love your, like even the pantry posts. I'm like, oh man, I, I need to do something about my pantry. It just, it gets you thinking in a really good way. So yeah, I think the work you're doing on, on your socials is great work. And that's very hard to do. I don't think people realize how hard it is to keep up your social medias. Yeah. (laughs) It's time consuming. I probably spend too much time on it, like I said, but yeah. And then I'll say, oh, well, I'm researching. I'm looking at what I should be doing, but then I shouldn't compare myself to what other people are doing. Sure. Yeah. (laughs) That's the cycle. I know that, that vicious cycle. Well, you're doing a great job, Sarah. So keep it up. Thank you. (laughs) Excellent. Well, I'd love to switch gears a little bit here and I know you have some thoughts on the Enneagram and how that relates to cleaning, organizing, decluttering. Um, And if anyone listening is unfamiliar with those Enneagram types, I have some episodes about that. Um, One particular with my colleague, Jeremy Smith, who is really into the Enneagram. So go check those out for a crash course on that. But Sarah, would love to open it up to you and hear your thoughts and perspectives on how these types relate to decluttering. What an interesting topic. Yes. Oh, it's so fun. Sometimes when my clients are virtual or in person know their Enneagram, it just kind of helps me understand what their strengths and weaknesses might be in pertaining to their particular number. Because, and what I love about Enneagram, I'm not a huge like I don't really understand horoscopes. I don't really <laughs> understand like Myers Briggs. <laughs> I've never felt like I really related to a personality test. Um, but what I really loved about Enneagram is that it doesn't put you in a box. Yep. Like that you are all of these numbers, right? You are all of these characteristics. But there's typically you know one or two that really really pertain to you. And 
I just love that it doesn't put you in that box, but it shows you kind of the po- box you put yourself in and then the way out that it's, it's not about making your, an idol out of yourself. It's mm-hmm. about being able to understand who you are. So then you can help others in a way, you know, help, well, help yourself get, you know, be the person you want to be right. and then help others and like bless others and, you know, whatever they might be struggling with. So mm-hmm. Yeah, sorry, that's just like a plug for the Enneagram. Sometimes yeah. I say Enneagram and people are like, nope, don't want to hear it. Just like another thing telling me <laughs> who I'm supposed to be. I'm like, no, wait, it, it's good. I promise. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And especially your point about not fitting into a box. Exactly. Like the Enneagram does not do that. And it allows you to flex. Yeah. And with the Enneagram too, right? How it has the kind of the scale of if you're in a good mood or in a bad mindset, how your type typically reacts. It's it's on everything's kind of on a scale. It's not saying, oh, you're a positive person 100% of the time. It, it gives you those differing moods and mindsets and personality traits. Um, so I completely agree. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then it makes sense for me. So mm-hmm. I am, I, I hate always starting off with the one because it's like, oh, well, if I'm a nine, <laughs> I have to wait until the end. So maybe we'll jump around. But <laughs> I, I am a one myself. So Woo, me too. <laughs> Yay, one life. <laughs> um, sometimes, sometimes I'm like, dang it, why am I this way? But I know. But, you know, we are who we are. Yep. But that's where it helps me understand when I get super emotional and I'm mm-hmm. freaking out about something, I realize it's because I'm stressed and oh, I'm reverting back to those characteristics of a four. And that's mm-hmm. why I'm feeling these things. Like it just kind of helps remember that I'm not just spiraling out of control. Like yes. this is just the way that that I work and I operate. Exactly. Yeah. Again, totally agree. And it's helped me so much exactly to that point. If I'm overthinking, overanalyzing or getting stuck in my ways and being stubborn, I don't use it as an excuse of, oh, that's just my one showing, but it's helpful to know, oh, hey, maybe you're just in this stress mode how can you get out of it? You know, this is how you react and that's okay. But how can we kind of move on from this maybe negative emotional state? So again, yeah, great, great points. Yeah. Yeah. No, I really, I really like that. Yeah. Don't use it as an excuse. Right. That's, that will, Ooh, that would eat me alive. Yeah. Like, I'm just, I'm just, I'm acting like a four right now. And it's like, yeah. okay, snap out of it. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, for me personally, I would never tell my clients or anyone else to snap out of it. Right. Moment. Right. Right. <laughs> well, anyway. Um, well, yeah, while we're chatting about a one. So mm-hmm. basically what I did, and this is a part of my course as well, is I broke down the different Enneagrams and then what their strengths and weaknesses may be in pertaining to, you know, what number they are. Mm-hmm. So then they can kind of help understand what they might, what other support they might need while they're trying to go through the decluttering and organizing process. Like for a one, for example, for us, you can hopefully relate to this, Mm -hmm. you know, systems typically come pretty natural to a one and keeping an orderly space and feeling structure is also very important to a one. So that's really what our strength is, is that it's going to come naturally. It's really easy for us to want to dive into organizing and then, you know, look for that beautiful aesthetic with the matching bins Mm -hmm. and uh, ones are typically very focused on their goal and it will really keep them on task while they're organizing. So like they can have that end goal in mind. And as a one, so the ones are either, they're called perfectionists or reformers. I'm trying to now stop saying perfectionists because I'm like, (laughs) I got to get away from this whole idea that perfect is even ever a thing. But that's typically the biggest downfall for a one when it comes to organizing or decluttering. And I think that's why I struggle with imposter syndrome so much because we'll want to rearrange the space over and over again until it's whatever our idea of perfect is. And we're so afraid of making a mistake of something or putting something in the wrong place or letting something go that we didn't actually want to. Like we're just terrified of messing up. And so with that, we put such hot, like unrealistic high expectations on ourselves. Mm -hmm. And then we might put it onto our family members too. So if you're trying to get your husband on board with decluttering or your kids or whatever it might be, we will put these same crazy expectations onto them. And then obviously imperfection is inevitable in that mm-hmm. case, because there's no such thing as trying to strive for this crazy, perfect world. So 
I can speak for that. That was like coming from my heart. That's like what yeah. I deal with on a regular basis. But I don't know if you relate to that too as a one as well. Oh, yeah. You know, Nathan, my husband, when I get get angry that he didn't put the plates in the specific pattern in the cabinet after emptying the dishwasher, you know, things like that. Yeah, I can totally relate to that. And specifically about the piece of how I tend to hold myself to such a high standard that sometimes when I do creep into that stressed or negative mindset, I begin to hold everyone else up to those standards, even if it doesn't make sense for them to be held to those standards. Um, And often enough, it doesn't even make sense for me to hold myself to those standards. Um, So I can completely, completely relate to that. And also just what a brilliant idea for you to relate Enneagram to these like decluttering tips and tricks. I think that is so smart. What a way to use it. And I hope you you have this, you know, written in a blog or something somewhere. I just think this is brilliant, like really, really great. And what an innovative way to take the Enneagram. That is incredible. Thank you. Yeah, it's I need to, I need to definitely write a blog post on that and yeah. get like my blog back up and running. Another thing on my to do list. We'll get yeah. there eventually. <laughs> that never ending list. No, I, I relate to that. But yeah, this is this is awesome. Um, and yeah, completely relate to the ones. And if you want to share any any numbers, we don't have to go through all of them, but I find this fascinating. So wherever, wherever, whatever you want to share is fine by me. Yeah. Well, I guess it's easier to talk about like the number that you are too sure. of like, and sometimes people feel super called out if you're like, okay, well, if you're a eight, this is how you're going to act. And people are like, no, I won't. I won't act like yeah. that. So <laughs> Maybe it's best not to go through each one. But, <laughs> sure. Um, but yeah, that's something that I definitely would love to share with more people and either yeah. make a course around that or like I mentioned, once, whenever I can and get to it of putting the fall in love with decluttering course out there, that's where like all of this information comes from. And I'm always happy to to chat with people about it, people who ask questions and you know share about that on, on social media as well. I've been thinking about kind of making that a, a social series, if you will, like going yeah. through each number and and what you may or may not struggle with based off of yeah, who exactly. you are as a person. Yep. And yeah, I mean, another plug for your socials, right? If, if people have questions about about their Enneagram and how it relates to decluttering, I'm I'm sure you'd be happy for them to reach out to you and, and engage with you. Yeah, no, that that would be great. And awesome. Um, definitely start sharing more about this too, if that's what people are super interested in. Yeah. I mean, I just think it's, it's so smart. I mean, I see all the time on social media, those posts where, you know, you can scroll through each number and it's like Enneagrams related to Taylor Swift albums or, you know, something like that. But this is, I think on the deeper level and you've clearly kind of synthesized the Enneagram information that's already out there and then added your expertise in terms of organization and decluttering. Again, just really, really brilliant. And I think it would help a lot of people. I was going to mention that the Enneagram does take that level of acceptance. Um, like you were saying how people might be, oh, you know, I'm a, I'm a one, but I'd never act that way. <laughs> but maybe, maybe you do upon deeper reflection, right? So it it requires that level of acceptance. And then once you can kind of get over that initial hill of accepting some of the traits you have, then you can really begin to leverage that Enneagram description to improve yourself or just understand who you are on a deeper level and, and accept who you are. Right. It's, I don't know. I'm kind of rambling here, but that's why I like it. Once you can accept it, you can then leverage the information. Yeah. And I I think, you know, there's nothing wrong with figuring out yourself. I think even there are times where it's like, oh, you care so much about who you are and like we're trying to improve ourselves and do all of these things. And like, yeah, I understand it can be taken to like a toxic level. And that's definitely not what I, I believe the Enneagram is trying to do. I'm sure there are some certain people who share about it that might do that. But mm-hmm. I think that There's just such a power with being comfortable enough in your own skin to accept the person that you are or accept the traits that we have, whether they are perceived as positive or negative, but accepting them. If we don't, then what are, what are we doing? You know, like even like when it comes to decluttering and organizing again, because that's what I'm here to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, (laughs) One question I've started having people ask is, when they're when they're buying things, when they're deciding if what they want to allow into their space and into their life. One of the questions that I've been pushing people to answer is who are you buying that for? 
Hmm. Because most of the time we're not buying it either. Maybe we are. We might be buying it to fill a void within ourselves because we believe that buying this thing might bring us joy, which Mm -hmm. things don't have the power to do that. It might be like a temporary spark of serotonin that you're going to get because you brought it in, but it's temporary. And then the other thing is usually who we're really truly buying it for is someone else or the perception of what we are when we purchase it, right? Mm. Of If I have this bag with a particular brand or logo on it, I get perceived by people in a certain way and I like the way that that feels. There is absolutely nothing wrong with that, but we make it seem like it's like, oh, you do that? Like if we were to actually say those words out loud, we shame ourselves and say, oh, I I don't want to feel that. So Mm -hmm. if we're feeling that that shame, like I think if we were all able to admit those things to ourselves and admit it to people around us who care about us, like we would just be so much better off. But, you know, we try to play ourselves little tricks and little games and, you know, not like kind of just ignore it. And obviously our society is not thriving by doing that. Mm Again, what an interesting perspective. And it it sounds like perhaps you're trying to help your clients be more intentional with what they purchase. To your point, there's nothing wrong with getting that that boost of serotonin or feeling a certain way when you buy a certain product, but as long as you're being intentional with it. And I think that might help stop the buying 10 bags instead of the one you really want or would really benefit your, your day-to-day life. Just setting that intention and that all ties into knowing who you are and really connecting with with your inner self. Yeah, we need to buy with intent and not mm-hmm. with boredom. Right. When we buy with boredom, we end up with clutter. And that's where I get the calls of like, I'm sitting yeah. in a, a pile of stuff on my floor, Sarah, please come and help me. And mm-hmm. I'm, I'm so down to be there. I am there for you. I will not judge you if that's where we get. But I would love if we could prevent that from happening, if we could prevent that heartbreak in the first place, if we could prevent that stress, you know, that's where I want that education piece to come through. And I appreciate the followers and the things like I promise I'm not just standing on my soapbox and just preaching this because (laughs) it sounds fun for now. Like I really, truly believe that if we were able to realize that stuff doesn't bring us happiness and that the pursuit of relationships and each other and our community are just so much more powerful than anything that we could ever buy. Mm -hmm. Again, you're solving for the root cause. You're not just trying to do the surface level cleaning and organizing, which you do very successfully, but you're taking it a step back and saying, let's, let's work at this root cause. Then we'll do the, the surface level fun, aesthetically pleasing organizing. Yes, exactly. Oh, that's wonderful. And Sarah, do you have any future plans, you know, looking at this next year, 2022 for Hello Clutter? Anything you want to share or plug to our audience? I feel like I should have thought about this question more because last (laughs) time I said something on your podcast, it came true. (laughs) Right. Yes. Please manifest it right here. (laughs) Oh gosh. I should, I, I, I feel like I should have known that question was coming and I didn't think about it. So I, um, I don't know. I mean, I do, I have dreams of, you know, maybe something like a podcast of my own or that Mm, getting that course out there to kind of help those things come through and the idea of growing my team as well, because eventually I would love to start a family with my husband and Mm -hmm. I can't have a baby on my hip organizing with my, (laughs) my clients, you know? Um, I mean, maybe I could, but I I don't want that stress on myself. So Mm -hmm. Maybe that's what it is of just being able to grow and get to a place where I not only can be a leader when it comes to decluttering and organizing for my clients, but as like a boss and a manager as well, and just be able to be surrounded by people who believe in the same mission that I do, because I know I'm not alone. I know there are so many people out there who do what I do and they do it well, and they just might not have a business in front of it. But I think just being able to reach more of those people and and to continue to not lean on my own understanding, but, you know, lean on the idea that I'm, I'm not in control at all times and kind of continue to let go of, I'm a control freak. Hi, I'm a one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I think just continuing to embrace that and, and yeah, just, I, I, I feel good about the year that's coming up. So I yeah. don't know exactly what thing that looks like or you know what what pretty shiny object that will look like on the Mm -hmm. next time we record our podcast together but I'm I'm really really excited for what's to come and I'm just I'm just so so I feel like I'm gonna cry that's so weird um but I just feel so grateful and so Mm -hmm. grateful 
for people like you who are helping small business owners and giving people a chance to share their story. And I'm just so thankful for everyone who's hired me and everyone who's mm-hmm. following me and, you know, cheering for me in my corner. And I think just embracing that community next year is really what I'm going to be focusing on. Yeah, no, that that's wonderful. And what a beautiful mindset to have, right? To just be excited to grow and whatever that means, you'll, you'll find out when that happens. And just being open to, like you said, growing your community, eventually growing your team, expanding and continuing to share the value you provide. I think that's a beautiful answer to what the future looks like. And I look forward to following along and and seeing where you go. I think it'll be wonderful places. Thank you. I think that's it. When you said that, I was like, yeah, next time I'm going to be like, yep, I have a team of 15 organizers who there help you go. me and yep. do these things. I think, I think that's my thing. I think you awesome. got me. Yeah, we'll check back in in a year or so and and see where you're at. I would I would love to do that. Yeah, I love love the manifestation we're doing here. <laughs> it feels good. Uh, that's awesome. Well, you know, I end every episode with what is your proudest accomplishment? And I think for you, Sarah, maybe reflecting on the past year, kind of 2021 and considering and thinking about perhaps what your proudest accomplishment has been this past year, business related or not. What kind of comes to mind for this past year? That's such a good question. And um, my husband asks me, how do I define my success? Like, how do I know I'm hitting my goals and I'm doing what I want? And I've realized it's not financial. It's not anything in terms of growing a team. Whereas like, I do think that's a wonderful goal to have and something I aspire to do. I think that for me, it's helping that one more person. And I think Mm -hmm. I said the same exact thing last year. I really do of just, I helped one more person declutter or I helped one more person realize that that's something that they wanted to pursue. You know, it like if, even if I just help one person in 2022 and I don't expand at all, at least I helped change one person's life. Yeah. Like that's, that's a big deal. And I think I take that for granted sometimes. So I hope I, I never lose that perspective. Yeah. Again, a, a beautiful mindset, a beautiful statement. And thank you for all that you do for, for our community and for your clients. And again, I hope everyone checks you out on your social medias. And before we sign off, where can people find you and Hello Clutter on social medias, website, et cetera? Yeah. So everything is Hello Clutter branded. So helloclutter.com, um, Hello Clutter on Facebook and on um, TikTok and Instagram at hello.clutter. So yeah, all, all the Hello Clutter things. <laughs> Yay, <laughs> perfect. Wonderful branding. And I hope everyone checks out you and Hello Clutter. And Sarah, thank you so much for returning to virtual coffee and updating us on you and where your business has been. Thank you so much for having me. Seriously, thank you, thank you, thank you for yeah. all the small businesses you feature from me to everyone else who you've had on your podcast. I still love, love, love listening to everyone. And I feel like I learned so much. And thank you for this wonderful platform. I really appreciate you. Thank you, Sarah. I, I appreciate it. And I hope to see you back here in about a year. That sounds good. Get it in <laughs> awesome. the calendar. Let's yes, go. let's do it. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you.